It's been about two years since the last one tip versus every hero for D.Va, and a lot has changed in the past two years, especially the change to 5v5, which drastically changed D.Va's role being the only tank. With all that said, let's start with a few general tips for D.Va. In Overwatch 2, nuking for kill potential is rarely worth it. A majority of the time, you'll want to save it for when you get demeched to ensure a free remake. It's basically a free life. When you get your ultimate, look to be hyper aggressive with it, and as you start to get low, position yourself for a good nuking position or fly straight up in the air. The only situation where I'd use the nuke outside of a second life is during overtime. During overtime, you can look to nuke in the middle of the point once you get demeched, as this will force the enemies to zone off of the point or potentially force a C9. But with Season 9 bringing self-healing to all of the roles, all it takes is one bullet to stop the self-heal passive. D.Va can do this easily at any range due to her shotguns. So don't hesitate to pepper damaged enemies even at longer ranges to make sure that their self-heal doesn't come into play. Lastly, don't underestimate D.Va's ability to take high ground. She can pressure from the high ground, leave, and then retake easier than almost any other hero. Especially on maps like Dorado or Gibraltar that have a lot of high ground, this is extremely abusable. For Doomfist, you want to make sure that you're defense matrixing anyone that he punches to deny his follow-up on them. There's very little that you can do about his ultimate, but he can mess you up if you try to remech in the wrong position. So make sure you avoid nuking near Doomfist as he can block the damage and then immediately use that empowered punch to stop you from remeching. As for the Diva Mir, micro-missile value is going to be the key to winning this engagement. You always want to make sure that you're DMing every one of their micro-missiles, and then you're saving your micro missiles for when their defense matrix runs out. And if the D.Va turns her back to you or dives your team, don't hesitate to shoot your micro missiles and primary fire into her back, and then follow up with defense matrix to cover for any teammates she may dive. Overall, this matchup comes to being more passive than the enemy D.Va. Let them aggress and try to punish them for their mistakes. As for Junker Queen, you want to try to play outside of Axe's distance. Her Axe is an important tool for her to build her ult charge, so the less that you allow her to use it on you, the better. Her Axe and her melee will go through your defense matrix, but you can eat her thrown knife. However, if you mess up and you don't eat the knife, you can always defense matrix teammates that get pulled in by the knife similar to a Roadhog Coat. But a lot of times they'll follow it up with an Axe, which defense matrix doesn't eat, and that's on your teammate for getting caught. In general, never brawl her, keep your distance. Mauga is a tank that a lot of people still struggle against even after his nerfs, and luckily D.Va is a great option against him. The most important thing to know is to not fight him during his overdrive. If you see him shout in a fight, back up immediately and protect your team from him with your defense matrix. You only want to commit onto him when he doesn't have his shout as it's going to be a 12 second cooldown for overdrive. And depending on who your DPS are, if you have a Reaper or Bastion, sometimes it's better to defense matrix them and let them kill the Mauga than try to kill him yourself they can absolutely blow him up. If you get caught inside of his ultimate, immediately nuke. It's gonna force him to either drop it or get killed. The only way he can survive it is if he drops his ultimate and then uses his charge for the damage reduction. And that's only if he's full health. If he's partial health, he may still die to it. Just make sure when you go for this that you play your nuke for cover until you can remake, that way you don't accidentally get picked off. Arissa can be a hard matchup for a lot of players, but the most important rule is you want to avoid hard engaging anytime she has her fortify. Pressure her to force her to pop it, then give her space and wait for it to run out. After it's ran out, you can burn her down with primary fire headshots and micro missiles. I know I already said it, but please do not use your micro missiles or primary fire on her when she's in fortify. It's a waste of your missiles, you can't get headshots with your primary, and on top of that she gets a damage reduction as well. Javelin has a quick activation time, but it's not too bad to eat it, and make sure you do whenever you can. Similar to Junker Queen's knife, if your teammate does get hit by a Javelin, try to defense matrix them to save them from any follow-up damage. And then just like Doomfist, Orisa's Javelin can stun you out of your remake, so be careful about nuking around Orisa. For Ramatra, you want to brawl when Ramatra can't brawl. He's only really a threat to you when he's in his nemesis form as you cannot mitigate his punches. When he pops it, use your boosters to assume high ground or to back off and give space. And then similar to the fortify with Orisa, the instant his nemesis form runs out, hyper aggress onto him as you can blow him up in monk form. Some barriers in this game are worth pressuring with micro missile, but with Ramatra, it runs out in 4 seconds and it has a large health pool, so don't even waste your missiles or your primary fire on it. When he pops it, shoot something else or look to reposition with your boosters. For Reinhardt, similar to Junker Queen, you want to avoid brawling him up close unless he's already weak. And even though you are the only tank on your team, don't hesitate to take off angles from your team to pressure the Reinhardt. It'll make him either defend their damage or your damage. 
Fire Strike is also one of the easiest abilities to read as it has a long activation time, so make sure you eat as many of them as possible. Unlike Ramatra, pressuring Ryan's barrier with micro missiles and primary fire if there's no other targets is absolutely fine. Especially with the micro missiles, they have no damage fall off, so if you're poking the enemy Ryan at distance as his team is approaching, they're going to do full damage on the barrier, making it harder for him to close the distance. For Roadhog, you always want to save a little bit of defense matrix to save teammates who get hit by his hook. And even though you have a large health pool, avoid being the one that gets hooked. Play around corners, play around high ground to make it more difficult. The closer that you play to the corner, if you strafe in and out, there's a chance even if you get hooked, the hook will break on the wall. And you want to have an idea of when he has his ultimate. Your defense matrix can eat the damage from it for a little while, but not the entire time. So make sure that you eat a portion of it while your team repositions and then play cover yourself till it's over. And finally, in Overwatch 2, Roadhog can use his take a breather during his whole hog, so it's no longer worth it to use your nuke on whole hog as he's just going to tank through it and then kill you afterwards. Sigma is another example where shooting barriers with your primary fire and micro missiles can bring value. Especially in lower ranks, Sigmas tend to leave their barriers up for way too long, and it has a long cooldown if you're able to break it. You cannot defense matrix the rock like you can javelin, so always try to play corners if you're fighting him up close. And then if your teammate does get rocked, try to defense matrix any follow-up damage on him. One of Sigma's biggest weaknesses is his ability to peel for his teammates. So while you're fighting the Sigma and poking him from a corner, pay attention to where the enemy DPS position and try to punish anytime they get out of position. Using aggressive nukes versus Sigma is especially bad as he can barrier it off. On top of that, his rock can also cancel your remake. For Winston, this is one of your best matchups. His primary can go through your defense matrix, but you beat him in the 1v1 every single time. He has a massive headshot hitbox on your primary, and micro missiles blow him and his barrier up easily. One of the best skills that you can build is instinctually denying any dives that he goes for. The instant that you see him jump in the air, try to deny him with your boosters and then use the other half of the boosters to fly back to your team. And if you're too late to boop him in the air, you can always boop him when he's inside of his bubble to try to push him out of the bubble into your team. For Wrecking Ball, a majority of the value that he gets is slamming your teammates up in the air for him and his teammates to follow up the slams of damage. So you always want to make sure a defense matrix any teammates that get caught by a slam. Your primary fire and micro missiles are very good for forcing him out, but you want to make sure that you don't chase him. Instead, put pressure on him, but then the instant that he rolls away, look to turn your aggression towards his team while he's out of the fight. Your cooldowns are on a faster cycle than him and you'll have much more uptime in the fight. Zarya is going to be one of your biggest struggles on tank when you're playing as D.Va. In general, you want to try to avoid fighting her up close and abuse high ground against her. Unless she doesn't have any bubbles, focus on playing the objective or pressuring her teammates that miss position. Most importantly, avoid using your micro missiles on her or her teammates when you know that she has bubbles ready. A full set of micro missiles will give her full charge, making it even harder on yourself. You can eat Zarya's grav, but sometimes it's a little bit difficult to guess when she's going to use it. Some people will recommend flicking your defense matrix on and off if you think that she has it, because when the defense matrix turns off, she'll think that she has an opening and she'll use it. The issue is, if you turn your defense matrix off, there's actually a little bit of a delay when you put it back on, she'll sneak it in in between. So instead what you want to do is keeping your defense matrix on the entire time, quickly flick behind you and flick back onto her. This will mimic the appearance that she has an opening to use it, but you won't suffer from the delay of turning it off completely. However, there's a lot of luck involved with this, and the higher that you get, the less people will fall for it. In general, it's just best to not position near your team when you know that she has it. That way you can defense matrix your team from a safe positioning if any of them get caught. For Ash, the most important thing is denying as many dynamites as you can. While Ash is viewed as an aim-oriented character, majority of her impact on the match comes from her dynamites and her bob. So if you're able to eat a majority of her dynamites, she'll build bobs slower, having much less impact on the match overall. You can also use your boosters to boot Bob off of objectives so he can't contest it or boop him in the less advantageous positions. Just make sure that you only try to do this when he's close to you or your team is in immediate danger as you will put yourself in a danger and if the tank dies, your team loses. In the slim chance that someone gets slammed up in the air by Bob, make sure you defense matrix them. The most important time to use defense matrix on Bob is when he first activates to escort your team to safety and cut LOS. Bastion's only an issue if you don't track his turret, so make sure that you always save a little bit of defense matrix when you know he has it. Then once you see he goes into his recon form, you can absolutely blow him up with primary fire and missiles. And anytime you can, try to eat his grenade, as it does do a surprising amount of damage and displace your team. 
For Cassidy, the most important thing is tracking his positioning and not losing track of him. If you ever see him isolate on a flank or an off angle, make sure you punish him. If he doesn't have his roll, you can blow him up extremely easily. With High Noon, you want to treat it similar to Whole Hog with Roadhog. You want a defense matrix at the beginning of it just so your team can get out of line of sight and get yourself to a safe position. Defense matrix won't last the entire time and you can try to catch the end of it, but it's always better just to cut the line of sight. You want to treat Echo similar to Ash and eat as many stickies as possible because that's where a lot of her value is going to come from. She's sneakily one of the best DPS picks into D.Va, so always make sure you know where she's at as she can burst you down with stickies to the back comboed with her beam. If you get below half health, always try to use your boosters to create space on her as her beam will go through DM and eat you alive. And if she's very close and she messes up her flight ability, don't hesitate to fly onto her and blow her up. Genji is also a solid pick into you, so make sure that you track his positioning and don't let him charge his blade off of shurikens to your back. Anytime he's outside of his blade, you want to defense matrix any of your teammates that he dives onto to deny any follow-up damage. And if he does blade onto your backline, the best you can do is try to boop him or throw a nuke in the air, but by the time the nuke goes off, he's already going to get one to two kills, and if you try to boop him, his team's just going to heal him. So if you dive his backline instead, at least he gets no support, and you might trade out the same people that he traded. On top of that, if you do nuke near him, he can slash dash combo Baby Diva instantly, and then get his dash reset to dash out a distance of the bomb. Against Hanzo, you want to treat him similar to hit scans. Do not allow him to hold off angles and pressure him anytime that you can get in his face. Make sure you don't fly directly at him, do a little bit of a serpentine pattern or up and down, as it'll make it harder for him to hit headshots on you on the way there. By taking these smarter engagement angles, you'll be able to save your defense matrix for when he storm arrows, which you'll want to do because it will burst you down. The most important thing to remember is the longer that Hanzo is alive, the better chance he has at getting a kill, Every single arrow that he shoots out is a slot machine roll and you do not want him to keep spinning. Against Junkrat, you want to coordinate with your team. If you're able to, get in his face and defense matrix him and micro-missile him at the same time and call out to your team to focus him while you're holding off his damage. Your missiles with even one teammate shooting him will blow him up very quickly. On top of that, he'll be a sitting duck because his mine will get eaten as well, which is his only mobility to escape. Now that you're the only tank, it can be really risky to try to hunt down an ulting junk route. So if he's nearby, sure, go for it. But if he's not, it's better to separate yourself from your team and then try to shoot the tire with your team. That way you can't get a multi-kill. This is also situational, but you can eat his passive with defense matrix. Against Mei, you want to play outside of her freeze range. Now that they've taken away her ability to freeze someone solid, she does very significant damage at around 100 damage per second. If you do find yourself close to her, save your boosters for when she walls you off, that way you can get heals. And overall, you want to try to avoid hard engaging on her unless she uses both wall and her ice block. If you track her blizzard, you are able to eat it. However, you're only able to eat it while the projectile is in the air. Once it's on the ground, you have to try to run away. Against Fara, you don't have to eat the entirety of her spam. Without damage boost, she can't one-hit any of the characters in the game, so eating every other missile and flicking the defense matrix on and off is more effective. Similar to Echo, if you see her mess up her boosters, you can easily dive onto her and punish her. Finally, you want to track her ultimate and try to shut it down. A lot of Faras will start to get aggressive, position in weird off angles, or try to sit on top of buildings or find flank routes. These are typically really easy to read, so act like you don't know that she exists, and then when you hear Justice coming in, turn around and DM it. For Reaper, you want to treat him similar to Junkrat. If he gets up close to you, defense matrix him while calling out to your team to focus him. This will make him extremely easy to blow up, or he'll have to use his Wraith to get out of the fight. And then similar to Farah, his ultimate is one of the most telegraphed ults in the game. They just walk at you, or they use their TP at your team. If you know that he has it, stick close to your team, defense matrix him when he goes for it. Sojourner is one of the best DPS in the game right now, especially in high ranks. Just like the other hit scans in Hanzo, you want to force her off angles at all times. You can also eat her nade for extremely easy value as it is a slow moving projectile and it's very strong if it does land in a good position. For Soldier, you want to treat him just like Sojourn. Deny off angles as often as possible. Do not let him hold high ground against your team. While he doesn't have a railgun to charge, you don't want to play on the open versus him as he will hold his primary fire on you the entire game and it's extremely annoying. When it does come to committing onto Soldier for the kill, 
You want to hold your micro missiles until you know that he doesn't have his healing station. When it comes to visor, evaluate if you need to defense matrix it. Just like whole hog or high noon, you can't defense matrix the entire thing. So a lot of times you want to defense matrix the first half of it while you're getting into a safer position, escorting your team. However, when it is a nano visor, you almost always want to make sure that you defense matrix as much of it as possible, because even just a split second could be life or death for your teammate. Sombra is one of your most annoying matchups, but at the same time, you can be just as annoying to her. In between fights or any downtime that you have, always be spamming your primary fire behind you, around your teammates, or any place that Sombra may be hiding. If you do spy check her, a lot of times it will lead to a free kill or her making a mistake. Against Sombra specifically, playing on high ground is really, really effective as it gives you an overwatch over your team to help protect them if they do get dove. And I mentioned it before, but it is extremely important that if Sombra messes up her translocator, it doesn't go far enough, you want to dive onto her and punish her. Symmetra is one of your biggest issues right alongside Mei because Defense Matrix cannot stop beam damage. Make sure you play distance on her and not let her charge her beam on you. While her beam can hurt you up close, don't hesitate to walk through chokes and destroy her turrets for your team, backing up, resetting, and then re-engaging. Also, anytime you see your teleporter, trading your missiles for it or just primary firing it is always worth it. Do not leave those things around. Against Torb, you can only really blow him up when he doesn't have his E. Keep an eye on him, and if he goes out of position or messes up his E, you can absolutely blow him up with your missiles and primary fire as he has a huge headshot hitbox. Your missiles also have no fall off damage, so they're extremely good for shooting his turret. As they almost one shot it, it will just take a few shots from one of your teammates to finish it off. And finally, don't hesitate to use your defense matrix to eat his molten core. It has a very long activation time meaning you don't have to have fast reflexes to react to it. Even if you end up reacting late and only eating half of it, that's still an immense amount of value for your team. For Tracer, you always want to track her positioning and defense matrix your teammates that she dives onto. She has no forms of burst damage, so if you eat her primary fire, she is null and void just like Ball. Finally, Tracer pulse bombs aren't too hard to track. It's not as easy as a Reaper or a Farah, but a lot of Tracers will tend to overextend or get overly aggressive when they're going for it, so don't hesitate to defense Matrix teammates when you think that she might have it. And as for Widow, you always want to know of her line of sight and then escort your teammates across those lines of sight safely. You can also defense Matrix your teammates that are trying to duel her. However, your defense Matrix doesn't last that long in the duel, so make sure you let your teammate know when it's about to run out so they don't get caught off guard. Once you do get up close to her, she's an extremely easy kill. But you do want to avoid looking straight at her at longer ranges, as you have a huge headshot hitbox and she will absolutely melt you. Against Ana, D.Va is actually a great pick, as you can mitigate all of her value other than Nano. When you want to fully commit onto Ana, don't defense Matrix until she recognizes you as a threat. Use your boosters to close the distance and primary fire some damage into her. Then when she reacts to you, pop your defense matrix. She'll most likely try to sleep you when she reacts. Then once she uses sleep, you can drop the defense matrix, pepper a little bit more damage, and then flip it back up right away. You want to aim it at her feet the second time because a lot of times Ana will try to self-nade herself. Eating the nade is extremely good value and secures you the kill. If she's playing outside of your range, don't hesitate to use your defense matrix to eat any of her heals and nades whenever you get one of her teammates low. Then you can pop your micro missiles while holding up to the defense matrix to finish them off. Against Baptiste, you want to treat him like a DPS hitscan because he's basically the best DPS hitscan in the game. Deny him off angles anytime he tries to go for them, and commit to him early on in the fight to try to force Lamp out. With recent nerfs, Lamp only has 125 HP, so you can blow it up with missiles alone even if you miss a few. In Defense Matrix, the window is situational. If your team is significantly far away from the window, just use your Defense Matrix to line of sight the window and escort your team to safety. Brig is probably your worst support counter. While you can use your micro missiles to poke out her barrier from range, you want to typically keep distance from her as your defense matrix cannot stop her flail or whip shot from procking Inspire. This means if you position poorly, she will have healing going out 24-7. And to make matters worse, you're not able to defense matrix her healing packs like you can on Honor or Bap, so you want to be careful about committing onto any of her teammates even if they get to low health. Alari is basically an easier version of the bat matchup. You want to force her off off angles at all times, and if she isolates herself, she's an easy kill. 
When you can't dive her, her primary is the number one target as that's more than half of her heals. Then after you destroy it, depending on her secondary support, if it's a lower healing output like Mercy or Lucio, you can 100% try to blow up the enemy tank as they won't have enough healing. Lastly, her ultimate is extremely easy to eat as it has a large hitbox and a lot of times she's going to be high up in the sky, making it an easy angle to get. Kiriko is easily the best dueling character in the entire game, including over any of the DPS. And you want to keep your eye out for when she uses either her Suzu or her Teleport, as you want to hard commit when she does. She is a very easy target when she doesn't have her cooldowns. Defense matrixing and oncoming Kitsune it can be a good idea, but you want to be backing up as you do it, try to create distance and get out of line of sight as quickly as possible. The key to going against Life Weaver is he is your primary target. If you waste your time on his teammates, he's just going to grip them out. On top of that, you can easily break his pedal with your primary fire and micro missiles or just boost her up to get him. And he also has a very large hitbox, making him a very effective target for your primary fire. You can eat his heals similar to Ana, but his healing output is similar to more of like a Mercy, so it's more important just to go for him instead of going for his teammates. Life Weaver gets a majority of his value from his grip in his tree, so just don't let him play the game. When he does use his tree, if you have a Bastion on your team or a Reaper, your primary fire and micro missiles do a pretty solid amount of damage so you can try to destroy the tree, as the enemy team is going to get hyper aggressive inside of it. Lucio is a skill matchup and not really a priority for you to deal with. If he messes up his movement, you can 100% punish him, but you can't mitigate any of his heals, and you have to use all your resources to try to keep up with him, so it's always better to try to pressure his other support. If you're able to pressure and blow up their other support, the Lucio won't be able to maintain team heals without them. Just like Kitsune, a lot of teams will tend to be aggressive when Beat comes out, so you can use your defense matrix to try to create distance and escort your team to safety. But in general, try to avoid brawling into the Beat. Against Mercy, using your primary fire to pressure her when she's flying around is a good idea. Even if it's a small amount of damage, it'll stress her out and make her have to play a little bit safer. You don't want to fully commit onto her until she's used her GA, so you can pepper a few shots into her and then follow up the GA with boosters if you want to try to punish her. You can also boop her out of reses, but it can be difficult because res has a pretty fast activation time, and on top of that, you have to boop her pretty far away from the res or else it's just going to go through anyways. DMing and contesting anyone pocketed by her is always good value. While it's always good to force out a singular DPS, if you can force out a DPS and a Mercy, that's a two for one value. Moira is actually very similar to Ash. Her orb is a big part of her impact on the match, and you absolutely want to eat it anytime you see it. Even if you're a little late to it, they're always worth eating because even a small damage orb can do 40-50 damage. Just like Winston, her beam damage is not something you want to be afraid of. You will win that 1v1. And if you see her mess up her fade, you want to hard commit onto her. If you see her look at her feet or she's getting low health, don't be afraid to flash defense matrix similar to Ana, as a lot of Moiras will try to throw their orb at their feet. Moira had one of the biggest changes since the last guide, and she's now able to use her fade while she's in coalescence. So it's not really worth nuking coalescence, and it's better just to try to line of sight it. Zen is similar to Cassidy. You do not want to let him take free shots on you during a fight. You either want to play out of his line of sight or fully commit to blowing him up. And remember, by playing cover, you can cleanse his discord, which puts a 7 second cooldown on his ability to replace it on you to where you can aggress his team during that time. Finally, it's almost always worth it to eat Zen 5 orbs when you see him charging him up at distance, because the one time that you don't eat it, one of your teammates is going to get one shot. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you let me know. I know the One Tip series was really important to myself and anyone who played Overwatch 1, so I'd love to keep the tradition going for any new Overwatch 2 players. If you have any questions on the tips or any heroes, make sure you drop by my Twitch stream at RoundNose to ask any questions you may have. And remember, Overwatch is an extremely situational game. Whether it's my tips, Car's tips, or anyone else's, they don't always fit the situation. So have them in the back of your brain, and the more that you practice, the more you'll understand when they're good and when they won't work. Improvement takes time, so make sure you're patient with yourself, and more importantly, have fun. Up next, we have one tip for Doomfist versus every hero.